Yeah, yeah, there you go. There we go. Now video too. Hopefully that stays on. If not, they're just gonna have to watch uh, last year's uh, uh, challenge video. So uh, thank you guys for showing up. Uh, this is a four week long nutrition challenge. This is gonna be our kickoff meeting. Where we're gonna go over the structure and what we're looking to do as we go through the four weeks. Um, with that, keeping in mind, like with most things, it's gonna take a little bit of uh, like build up till we get to where we're feeling comfortable and really starting to move through this. Four weeks is not a crazy amount of time uh, as far as nutrition goes, but we can make some really good progress initially, like lay some groundwork that we can build upon over an incredible time. Our goal here is to kind of build some healthy habits as we uh, move forward through this challenge uh, and then eventually see some really nice changes that hopefully we can progress and build on over time. So, um, a couple things. One, your in-body test. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of these numbers, because some of them can be a little bit confusing and uh, throwing you off. The very top here is just that personal information you put in there, which has your height, your age, your uh, gender, well, technically your sex, and then uh, what time you took the test. Uh, it can be nice if we can replicate the time of the test next time meaning that you did it in a, a late morning timing, uh, just because it, it would be more indicative of what your time of uh, your body was in at the time, like I had breakfast or I had blah, blah, blah. So keep that in mind, if we do retest, you can try to get that same time, but if, if it's not exact, trust me, it's not gonna throw you off too badly. Um, below there, it has your basic body composition, so the very top portion, which will have uh, your total weight, which is on that very far right side, and it breaks it all down into your total body water, which is what's inside your cells and what's outside your cells. Then it goes into your just dry, lean mass. Everything that's pulled water or weight, that's, that's all you exist after that. Uh, and then body fat mass. And then it's gonna put that all together in those weight categories. Lean body mass is everything without body fat. So uh, just below there, muscle fat analysis. It's gonna have your weight, how much muscle mass you have, and your body fat mass. And really our goal when you see that is if I was to connect the end points of those, my goal is to have a bit of an arrow that points forward if I was to connect those dots. Now, a straight line would be super solid. If we do have a little bit of a backward arrow, our goal is to shave those other pieces down and get to that straight line or eventually start to develop a little bit more of an arrow. Um, just because you're over in a certain category doesn't mean that it's bad. So if I like, oh, I have more muscle mass than I, it says as 100% of healthy, normal, oh, son of a darn, I'm strong and awesome. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, all of these numbers, if you see that like kind of dash mark in that center point, is all based off of what is healthy, normal, based off of someone your age and your height and whether you're male or female, it's important that. So a doctor just looks at those and goes, this is what healthy, normal for your thing is, check the box. So if, if you say, like, for me, as an as a athlete, I'm like, oh, my muscle mass is above healthy normal, I would celebrate that and not be sad about it. So um, just keep that in mind. From there, below there, obesity analysis. Worst thing ever you could say, oh, what's your obesity analysis? Um, BMI is the top one, so that's just basal meta, or uh, BMI is a body mass index. They just lump you in a category based off of height and weight. <laughs> Thumped in it. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, super obese so just keep that in mind like muscle does not get coordinated into that one uh and then from their body fat percentage actually something we need to pay a little bit more attention to healthy normals will show there it's 10 to 20 for guys and i believe for ladies it's it'll either be 18 to 28 or is that it yeah 18 to 28 percent is the health it's like make sure that wasn't 20 to 30. um so inside those ranges low ranges of that would be like your ideal athlete side, and then hot in that middle is your average. So keep that in mind. That is gonna be something we pay attention to. Um, you may notice sometimes, especially I've had this with challenges where people lose a good amount of weight and they lose body fat, but because they lost so much weight, their body fat percentage actually throws off and it'll be like, this shows I didn't really lose much body fat percentage. It was like, yeah, because as you lost weight, your percentage had to change a little bit. So keep that in mind as we start to retest. Below that is your lean muscle mass analysis. So this is just where you carry your muscle mass. Right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, core, trunk, basically chest all the way down to your butt. Um, if you look at this, really we pay attention to is like, is your left to right similar? 
as you have more muscle mass on one side to the other side. And it, it has to be significant. Everyone's gonna have a little bit of muscle mass difference left to right. If it's dead even, that would be impressive. I don't think anyone probably here is like, oh yeah, mine's exact. <laughs> so keep that in mind. And like I have, like I always pay attention to like my arms because my arms are way off. They're about uh, a little over half a pound difference. I have a bunch of plates in this arm. So that always makes it look weird. So keep that in mind. You might've had an injury and that'll show potentially as less muscle mass. It might also show, hey, I had an injury three years ago. I've been busting my ass to get it back to normal. It now has more muscle mass because you focused on that arm. So keep that in mind. If you're taking a look at that, nothing's gonna be too crazy, but that's more like, hey, I've got a weird difference here, but now I'm lifting or I'm doing these things and it's now it's presenting weird. Otherwise, don't worry about it <laughs> too badly. Um, below there is ECW, TBW. So what that is, is extracellular water as a ratio of your total body water. This kind of helped me look and say, oh, things look kind of hydrated or wow, your, your water is being just pulled out. We're probably low on water right now. That ratio, we're looking to be at that perfect in the center, 0.38. That's one of those ones where I do want to be in that healthy normal average. Um, but you can see a little bit low, a little bit high, depending on how much we've been uh, enjoying our water. Pay attention to water because water is something very important when you're trying to lose body fat or build muscle because your body needs water. Um, upper right is going to have that segmental fat analysis where you carry body fat, arms, legs. Like humans, we carry most of our stuff in the trunk, so you'll see that that usually tends to be the highest percentage for most people. A uh, little bit more important numbers are below that. Basal metabolic rate and then your visceral fat level. That's basal metabolic rate is how much calories your body requires just because of how much muscle mass to keep your heart going, to keep your brain functioning. That's that number if you did nothing physically all day. So that's how many calories your body just requires to function. Now that being said, if I'm not really doing anything, I need to be under that if I want to cut some body weight, if I want to cut some body fat. Uh, but if I'm exercising a ton, I'm still going to be probably above that and I can still burn based on what else I'm burning outside of that. An average day is 15 to 30% more calories than what your basal metabolic rate is. Uh, so if you're a very athletic person, worked out in the gym, and then you also have a very strenuous day at work that's physical and you've got kids screaming at you all the time, you're running around the house, you're going to have a pretty high extra calorie intake from that. Uh, but if you're sitting in bed for 24 hours uh, watching TV, then it's not going to be very much higher than that because you're not doing very much to, to burn those what calories. Was that again? 15 to 30 ish percent. And then what I'm going to do is so keep in mind, um, I'm going to send you guys a message after this directly to you. Uh, I will say this right now it is going to be a copy and pasted message. So it's not very like intimate, like, hey, it was very nice talking. It's just very like, hey, this is how I'm going to be messaging you over the, the course of this, this challenge. Uh, please write back with an answer to the two questions I'm going to ask you, which are, what is your exercise levels and what kind of exercise are you doing? Uh, like how many days, how many hours potentially in a day? Like, because if someone's gonna tell me, oh, I work out six days a week for three hours a day, I'm gonna be like, well, you need a lot of food so we can protect that and you're not just burning out. But if that exercise level is a little bit lower, I'll know exactly where to adjust and give you guys numbers based on that. What your calorie intake should be, what your, your fats, what your proteins, what your carbohydrates intake should be from that. And then you'll take those numbers that I will put in there and we'll, uh, we'll set those into our MyFitnessPal, part of the two applications I sent you an email to download. And from there, we'll be able to hit our targets for what we're looking to intake daily as we go through that. We'll talk more about that here as we go through that. Um, and then visceral fat level, the very base number there. Visceral fat's everything you can't see on the outside, so not the cool fun stuff, but what's actually chunked into the guts and around your heart and actually correlated with heart disease. So um, that number becomes very important. A perfect number, or at least the healthy, is the range is four to six. Um, but keep in mind, we're just trying to get maybe potentially under that 10 or that halfway mark. Uh, it's hard to judge off of that because there's not like a... Oh, a seven means that you have 4.8 pounds of this. No, it's, it's not as specific as that. It's just gonna put me in a range, one to 20, and then I'll give us an idea of what to work. If we can see that change, that is an awesome change that we can develop in there. One point over four weeks would be awesome. The most I've ever seen is three points change in four weeks, uh, which is, to me, is always like, holy shit, that's incredible. 
And so keep that in mind as we go through there and we'll see that as we change. Um, the very bottom piece of this will have like your previous test scores, but only for those four numbers that it shows. Your weight, your muscle mass, your body fat percentage, and that ratio of extracellular water and total body water. Keep this sheet if you wanna know the very specifics. I lost specifically 1.8 pounds in my core and half a pound in each arm. That way you'll have this sheet to be able to see those differences. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go over this presentation. The nice thing about this presentation is it's just gonna basically keep me on track so that I don't just start talking about, I don't know, random unicorns and weird stuff as we go through here. Um, there's gonna be some general information on the nutrition side about that. If you do have any questions, put your hand, let me know. Uh, I'm gonna shoot a lot of information at you for the most part. Uh, if nothing of it sticks and later you have questions, send me a message. Uh, part of what this is as a challenge is having someone to bounce ideas, questions, and just concerns off of, and that's what I'm there for. I will be messaging you weekly. Uh, I usually choose to do that on Wednesday where I'll message everyone in the group personally. Uh, and when I do that, what I'm looking for is just a reply, some type of conversation. Tell me how things are going, how you're feeling, how are things in the gym, ah, I feel run down. Oh, I feel great, I have lots of energy, et cetera, et cetera, as we go through there. Uh, usually as we switch diets or shift foods that we're eating as we go through, you're initially gonna have some dip of energy. That's just normal for the body when it's trying to accommodate something new for it. So um, a lot of times I'll be like, how are you feeling? Oh, I feel like crap, and it's three days in. It's like, yeah, that's pretty normal. Like, I hope that's, but, but in the, like two weeks, I still feel like crap. That's not normal. We've, we've now hit a weird point. Two weeks in, your body should have accommodated to some of these things. Now we need to look at what's going on. Maybe we're not eating enough. Maybe, maybe we're missing enough energy that we're taking in or not getting enough protein as we go through it. Um, this is our kind of hierarchy for what builds the perfect athlete. Uh, many of you have seen this before. The basis of our nutritional pyramid or athlete pyramid is nutrition. The biggest differences that we can make as athletes, as humans, for our own health, this is focus on food. I like if you can work out for 30 minutes to an hour every single day, that's incredible. But most of us eat for more than that every single day without even thinking about it. Three meals of that, you add in all that time. So keep that in mind, the biggest thing we can do is just shift in our nutrition. Beyond that can be our, our aerobic capacity, our, our metabolic conditioning, which is just cardio. And then <coughs> gymnastics, working on our body control and working through. Um, as we go through today, we're going to just talk a little bit about our foundations, interpreting the meal plan that we have coming up here, uh, and what we want to do as our next steps as we continue forward through today. So, what I want you to focus on. First off, are you eating consistently throughout the day? And are you eating uh, a good spread throughout that consistency? So, meaning that I don't have a consistent four hour window that I'm eating in, unless if you are like an intermittent faster, please let me know if you're an intermittent faster. Uh, please do let me know if you are, I only eat keto and that's just how I eat. Uh, just because I need to know those things, you can have success in any way, shape or form and how you eat, uh, but you do have to focus on those little pieces. So um, just so I know ahead, but my goal would be that you're having a breakfast, you're having a lunch, you're having a dinner throughout the day. Um, and preferably, as needed, you're having a couple snacks in there as well. So uh, usually a good uh, ratio for that is you'll have a breakfast, a snack in between breakfast and lunch, a lunch, a snack in between lunch and dinner, and then dinner time food. Uh, personally for me, I usually have breakfast, a lunch, a snack, and a dinner. I skip my mid-morning snack. It's just something that I don't really feel uh, affects me too badly. But I do feel it when I skip a snack in between lunch and dinner. It's a little bit bigger span for me. If I skip that little lunch time or that snack time, uh, usually I'm gonna overeat at dinner. I'm gonna find myself maybe having a snack after dinner, which leads to another snack after the snack <laughs> after dinner. So keep that in mind. Uh, we want to try to have a good consistency and good spread throughout the day. Um, balancing your meals with a good amount of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. We're gonna talk about what proteins, fats, and carbohydrates are but they're just the three big portions of what food is made out of. Uh, most foods have two pieces to it, I would say. So like a good piece of meat will have fat and protein. A nut will have 
Actually, a nut is one of the few things that's actually kind of crazy about it. Because it has a little bit of carbohydrates, it has a whole lot of fat, and it has a little bit of protein. It's one of the few food sources that have all three. Uh, but most things where you'll find have one or two of those macronutrients that we're looking to balance as we go through here. And we're looking as we go through, and we'll talk about it, to have a good balance of about equal amounts of protein, carbohydrates, and fats in our diet. You will see that likely you'll have a little bit more carbohydrates because it's a good source of energy, especially for athletes as we go through here. But if you balance the carbohydrates and fats and keep your proteins consistent, you'll see good changes as we go through. Drinking water. Water is very important. Do your best to drink about 80 ounces a day. That is a general number that I would give for everyone. Uh, but if you're a very tiny person, 80 ounces is going to be pretty tough. I'd say at least 60. If you're a really big person, probably want to eat more than or drink more than 80 ounces. Be up around that 100 ounces in a day. If you eat a glass of or drink a glass of water at every meal and every snack, let's say 12 ounce glass, you're going to hit 60 ounces by the end day with just five glasses. Now, I would recommend, and several of you have them, carry around a water bottle so that you have something that's easily accessible that allows you to drink when you're thirsty uh, or just when you're thinking like, maybe I'm hungry, take a drink and then think about it for a second. If you are, then have a snack, totally fine. Um, but keep that around there and that's going to be our goal to look for is around 80 ounces a day. From there, uh, do you eat around your workouts? If you are exercising, um, I don't really care if it's before or after. I don't like to eat before I work out just because it's going to be sitting in my stomach as I'm trying to move. Uh, but your body will still be able to utilize that energy that you put in after your workout. Um, I do recommend after you work out, have some type of snack that involves protein and carbohydrates. Fats are a little bit harder for the body just to go and use it as energy. But if it puts in some carbohydrates, then it's, you'll see a noticeable, that body will be like, cool, I can use that energy to pull in this protein I can build the muscles that I just tore up. Um, are you eating out? And if you are, are you making good choices? Simple as that. I do my best to try to avoid eating out as much as you can, but that being said, when you do, try to make choices that will work for you. Um, I was a bartender and a server for, for several years. I'll say this, as much as it can be annoying, you're the one paying for food. So choose options that are good and ask for options that may not be said. Hey, can I get that grilled uh, instead of fried? Try to avoid the fried foods. Can I have salad with uh, dressing on the side? And then I can choose how much I choose to put in there versus them. So keep that in mind. This is one of the big sides of both today. Um, this is probably the biggest thing that you can do for me and for you to see how you're eating, which is logging your food. So um, starting, as soon as you can, uh, granted we our official kickoff is Monday, but as soon as you can, start to log what you eat in my fitness pal. Uh, that was that other app that I'm, I have you download. Um, the biggest uh, annoyance with it is that it takes a little bit of legwork initially if you've never used it before, uh, because you have to look up everything specifically, then it doesn't know what to look up. As you start to log your food, it'll recognize some of the things that you eat regularly. It'll say, Recently, you've had, and you can basically just click and go, especially if you're eating a lot of the same foods. Yeah. It has a barcode scanner mm -hmm. too, and so yeah. like so many foods are in there. Yeah. yeah. If you go to Starbucks, it has a Starbucks entire menu. The only ones that are are difficult are like uh, mom and pop restaurants and stuff mm -hmm. like that. From which I will say, when you're logging things like that, just do your best to choose an option that seems similar. You don't have to be 100%. Here's I, this is the biggest failure point for people with this is they try to get too specific. And then three minutes in of searching for that very specific thing, they're like, I fucking hate this and I'm out. <laughs> Throw this away. And then they don't walk. And it's like, well, that's not helping us at all. So put in something and that'll at least give you an idea as you go through there. So um, big side with that, do start to log your foods. Sometimes I do find this is one of those things where people are like, I'm not going to eat that if I have to walk. So it can be kind of beneficial at times. Um, and then last one, focus on quality foods, not quantity. Look for good foods as we go through here. Your body will appreciate as best as possible. So um, looking at some of the pieces of the puzzle, carbohydrates. So carbohydrates come in a couple different forms. You'll have your like fruits, your vegetables, uh, and then you also have your uh, starches. So your rices would be your starch side. They're kind of your high power, high octane uh, carbohydrates, 
Uh, and then from there, your fruits, a little bit high sugar content, but uh, lots of good fiber that you can have with those ones. Yeah. And then your last little bit is what you should add with most of your stuff, which is just basic vegetables. So your, your broccolis, your cauliflowers, your, your spinaches and, and lettuces, etc. Um, I set a bunch of different kind of like picture. I know it's not exactly the clearest thing here. Ah, that's a little bit better. Um, as you can see, this is just a list of uh, a giant picture of different carbohydrates. Now, some of these ones, I will say, have carbohydrates and other pieces in them as well. Little bits of protein, like it has quinoa. Quinoa has a certain amount of protein with it as well, even though it's carbohydrate and predominantly a carbohydrate source. So you will have to pay attention to some of those ones. Some of the beans or nuts, uh, nuts, some, some of the sides will have a little bit of protein or a little bit of fat when it comes to nuts and stuff. So be a, pay attention a little bit to the carbohydrate sources that you have. Um, but you're, you're going to be looking to get mostly your carbohydrates from your vegetables, your broccolis, from your okra. I think that's okra. <laughs> uh, lettuces, Brussels sprouts, peaches, etc. Uh, do have your starches, but just limit them to a smaller amount. So when structuring a plate, think about, about a small handful of rice and a big half plate full of vegetables as best as you can. Vegetables are kind of like the weights of, of the gym. Like they force your body to work a little bit, but they're super nutritious. So you get a lot out of them, but your body also has to work to process that, what, what it's coming from. So I tend to say like, your body is gonna be super awesome if it's bench pressing broccoli all day. So keep that in mind. Um, from there are other sources, uh, carbohydrates. Some of the things to think about when it comes to carbohydrates is just, as I said, like moderate some of those ones where it's the rice cakes and potatoes. Um, some of these ones you'll see that are kind of funky. It says moderate, like bananas, melons. The only reason for that is there's super high sugar content with certain fruits. Um, and that sugar content is what's called high glycemic content. Basically what that does is it just raises your blood sugar really fast. And then your pancreas has to shoot out a bunch of the insulin to, to take care of all that. So your body's like real quick, like, ah, I have to do something really fast and get this out of the blood. But if I eat things that are not like that, strawberries are a little bit more low, it takes a lot more of that to get that blood sugar just jacked up. And your body can process it a lot easier. So just be careful about some, but that being said, if you're eating like, oh, I had a banana every day, I'd be like, I had five, that's really good for you. Versus, oh, I had a chocolate milk every day. He's like, oh. Banana sounds good. <laughs> yeah, totally called that out because somebody said chocolate milk earlier. Uh, proteins. So your protein sources, as you can see, come from beans, your quinoa, your eggs, fish, uh, nuts, and just whatever meats you are choosing to have. Tofu, uh, satan. I'm trying to think of what other vegetarian or vegan options there are. Uh, there's another one. I can't remember. Tempeh. Thank you. That was it. Um, tempeh. It's... Breast bean, but yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, I was a vegetarian for three years. I, I've tried them all. So, um, As I said, I put the picture up here because you can see some of these ones have some much higher fat contents than others. So when you're looking for meats, do your best to try to look for lean meats. Chicken breast, turkey, pork tenderloin, white meats as you go through there. But you will get certain ones that have higher fat contents. Do account for that. If you're having a meal that has a meat like salmon, uh, which does have a pretty good, granted, very healthy fats, but it has a good amount of fats in it. You're probably not looking to add any other extra fats to your meal uh, that you'll be having with your vegetables and maybe a little bit of rice or quinoa as you go through them. So if you're choosing a fattier meat, then you need to accommodate that in your meal as you go through them. What's medium fat cheese? Medium fat cheese? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Skin, like sometimes they have like... Uh, like cottage cheese. I love personally cottage cheese. It's just, it's basically a protein bomb with not a lot of fat or carbohydrates in it. Um, but you'll see, just take a look at some of this. I'm actually like, as I, I was like, honestly, I don't care. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Um, so paying attention to some of those ones, some of the fat content sides. Uh, for example, eggs is a good way to think about this one. Egg whites is where you get your protein from. So and everyone's all like, eggs are such a good source of protein. It's the egg white. It has about six grams of protein and just the egg white. If you remove the egg yolk, that's all it is, basically protein. Egg yolk, 
there's not really much fat in the yolk, it's just fat. Or uh, protein in the yolk, it's all pretty much all fat. So if you're eating eggs and you're having a lot of them, you're gonna get a lot of body fat or a lot of fat from those eggs. Uh, look to supplement with extra egg whites mm -hmm. and take some of those yolks out if you're watching that, body, that fat uh, content. Um, and then last little bit, our fat sources, our nuts, our meats, our olive oils, olives, seeds, avocado, some of those sides as we go through there. There will be meals where you have a very lean protein and some starches and you're gonna need some avocado or something to add some fats to it. Or maybe I'm gonna saute my vegetables in olive oil so that I can make sure that I get those fats up. Fats are not a bad thing for you. They're a perfectly amazing, awesome thing for your body and your body needs some of those ones. The only difference is that that fat is very energy dense. So uh, one gram of protein is four calories. One gram of carbohydrate is four calories. One gram of fat is nine calories. It's over double the amount of calories per the similar size uh, uh, serving. So that being said, when I say that you're gonna have an equal kind of range between your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates, you're gonna see that those numbers, protein and carbohydrate, carbohydrates will be a little bit higher than protein. Fats will be way down here. Like, let's just say, uh, eating 100 grams of protein, you're gonna eat 120 grams of carbohydrates, your goal will be like 50 grams of fat. And you're like, that doesn't sound equal to me, Cade. Well, it's because that calorie count and that density of, of nutrients within the fat. So I always tend to say there are essential fatty acids, meaning your body must have fat to function because it can't get all of these things just from carbohydrates and, and protein. So you need fat in your diet to work healthy and functional. So keep that in mind. We just don't need a ton of it. Same with carbohydrates. So. Now, if we want to be super easy about this, hey, like logging and all this stuff is so hard. This is what I would focus on. This is the plate method, simple as that. You just do half your plate as vegetables, whatever vegetable that may be. You cut your other half plate in half and then you look to put some type of starch or grain in there, potatoes, your rices, your quinoas, and then a quarter of your plate will be your protein source. Usually a quarter of the plate will get you somewhere around five to eight ounces of meat. Most people need about six ounces of a protein source to get all the protein you would need. Six ounces of chicken breast will put you at about 36 grams, almost 40 grams of protein. Your body's not gonna be able to process much more than that in a meal. So that's why we try to range out those three meals plus two snacks so that we can get all that in, in a nice healthy meal. Um, as, so this is just like the easiest way that we can do it. Now, you will receive a meal plan. It's on your uh, Healthy Stuff Nutrition. I've gotten everyone set in there with the meal plan. Um, it'll look almost like this. This is my personal one for me. Um, but it'll have the exact same setup uh, with the... I'm not gonna I'll probably turn this light back on. Uh, set up with boxes where you will see a Monday through Friday, or Monday through Sunday, three meals plus two snacks. Uh, and this will give you a general idea of how to eat within the day. Now, um, this is a, a, a nutrition challenge for a group of people. This is not a honed in, very specific meal plan for just you. So there's ranges. Your meal plan will have some ranges. It'll be three to five ounces of this. Now, uh, if you're a smaller lady, you're going to look to be on uh, the lower side. Uh, smaller men look to be in that middle-ish range, larger side, then you're gonna look to be on the higher range of that. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure that you're logging those so that you can see what that breaks out by the end of the day, because our goal is by the end of the day having that well-balanced meal side. So um, keep that in mind as we go through there. Um, some of the things that are nice about the meal plan uh, is there's a bunch of recipes. Anything on the meal plan where you see three asterisk marks on it will have a recipe on the Healthy Steps Nutrition website. If you go to healthystepsnutrition.com, there's a pull down that says recipes that you can click on, or you can just put healthy dash recipes and it should pop that right back up. Uh, and it has a ton of recipes. Now it has more recipes there than are in your meal plan. So you might see some really cool options there. It has dinners, breakfasts, lunches, it has snacks, it has little dessert options if you're looking for something uh, kind of Swedish on there, but also keeps you within good target macros as you go through that. 
Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, it does have like a snack plus a post-workout snack. So if you are working out, keep in mind, you can take a look at some of that options of what would work best for you. Um, as I said, it is a general guide. It is not a specific like, okay, if I just do this every single day, I will be totally fine. The reason I say that is because if you try to eat a different breakfast every single day for seven days and a different lunch for seven and a different dinner, you're going to spend most of your day cooking uh, and cleaning dishes, which is not a lot of fun. So personally for me, it's about meal prep. I choose a meal in here that I find that I really like, like breakfast, oh, protein pancakes. I'll set up and get ready with protein pancakes for a whole week and I'll have that same thing so that I just know exactly what I'm having. I'll make a big meal of whatever lunch I really enjoy. Uh, I chose the pulled chicken that they have in here. And I made a bunch of pulled chicken, and then I just steamed up a bunch of vegetables, uh, and then I have some potatoes that I made for my uh, starch side. So some quick and easy that I can grab and go through. Uh, I'll say this right now, one of our things going forward, this week our challenge is food prep is I want you to prepare a meal, whether it's a breakfast, whether it's a lunch, whether it's a dinner, that you can have set and ready to go throughout the week. So basically five days, I say, uh, is a good setup to have uh, meal-wise. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit here. So this is the meal plan side. It has those little extras as you go through there. Keep in mind, nothing in here is, as I said, specific. You can grab, like some of them, I love this. It has like mahi-mahi on here at one point in time. Uh, I've been given mahi by a friend. I've never purchased it. It's really expensive seafood. Uh, so, so if I was like, oh, I found rockfish that they sell at Costco, which is super actually cheap. It's a white fish. That's pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio. Hey, uh, I, I don't really like fish. I'll do chicken. Sounds good. Or I'll make a ground turkey. I'll make some ground turkey meatballs. That'll work for me. Perfect. Find an option that works for you, see how it weighs left to right uh, versus its uh, protein levels, and then just use that as the substitute. It's totally fine to substitute any other of those pieces. I hate broccoli, cauliflower, yeah. It's weird that you like cauliflower, not broccoli, but yeah. hey. <laughs> Simple as that. Find the options that work best for you. Um, the other thing about it in the food uh, meal plan is that all proportions, or all portion sizes are cooked. So if it says three ounces of chicken, it means three ounces of cooked chicken, not raw chicken. You're gonna lose a bunch of water weight, you're gonna lose a bunch of fat as you go through there. So keep that in mind, that's going off of the cooked weight. Uh, and that's how we'll, we'll judge that and log that in the MyFitnessPal. Um, meal prepping, so this is what our, our goal for the, the week is going to be. What I tend to say is choose a meal that you have the most difficulty with. For most people, it tends to be either breakfast or lunch. Because uh, dinner, people are like, oh, I can get home and I can get some things done. Uh, but choosing, to choose a meal and then prepare that uh, on a Sunday or a day that works best for you. Uh, it doesn't have to be. I will meal prep on a Wednesday sometimes. I'm out of meals, I'm gonna cook a dinner and I'm gonna cook a whole lot of food at dinner. And then I'm just gonna make a couple meals to throw in the fridge that I have leftovers. Leftovers to me are the backbone of healthy eating because it just keeps you focused. There have been way too many times I've gotten home after a long day and I'm like, I one, not cooking. Uh, I'm barely gonna try to get off of this couch, but now I gotta figure out what I eat, and the only reason that I ate something healthy was because I had something left over that I had cooked and prepared otherwise. Otherwise, if I didn't have that in my house, I'd have probably stopped somewhere on the way home, and shit would've gotten bad. So keep that in mind as we go through there. Um, three apartment containers, these are, uh, you can get them on Amazon, like 12 of them for 12 bucks, like they're super cheap, and they're basically like that. Uh, meal plan style, just half of it with two other small containers on the side. They are perfect and they stack, like 12 of them stack into this little thing and they hide in your, in your cupboards very easily. Um, I recommend getting some just because they are very easy to set up, just quick little easy meals that are easily proportioned without very much weighing um, as you go through. Uh, helpful tools, Instapot, a crock pot, through those three apartment containers and muffin tins. Muffin tins, there's a lot of meal uh, recipe sides that require a muffin tin, like egg muffins and, and uh, meatloaf muffins that are very easy <laughs> to make and easy to store for later. So I do recommend having one of them. Uh, if you get, Instapots sometimes can be used as a crock pot or something. 
these are two things that help me immensely for food prep side. Like you could just throw a bunch of frozen chicken in an Instapot and in 30 minutes you can have pretty much pulled chicken with whatever sauce you chose into it. Um, are they required? No. Uh, they can be just very, very helpful, especially when food prepping. Crock pot, some of my favorite meals are, are made in a crock pot because I can just throw a bunch of things in containers, throw them in the freezer, and that morning I can just dump them in the crock pot, put it on low, and head off to work. And I know that when I come home, I'll have a, a meal pretty much set and ready to go, like pot roast. Okay, you're gonna receive an email here, what time is it right now? 10.40, I think I sent it at 10. Uh, no, you didn't even see, I scheduled it, I'm, not, I'm ninja. Um, that has a couple options for meal prep. Uh, that have, one of them's pot roast. Like, it's one of my favorite things, so. Um, and if you don't mind having the same things, it can be very beneficial. I'll just say that it makes it so much easier for me. Some people are like, I have to have different flavors every single day and stuff. It makes it a lot more difficult. Uh, but that being said, doesn't mean that it's not impossible or something. An issue like that. Um, and then just think about what you're going to food prep for the week. Uh, that email that we just sent out just recently has some uh, uh, challenges for the week. One of them is I want you to post what your meal prep was in our group page, the March. Uh, nutrition challenge. So in that HSN, there's the direct messages between me and then there's going to be the group forum. And the group forum is going to be used to post those cool pictures for the challenge. Hey, look what I made. Uh, or I tried this thing and it really didn't work. I don't like it. Did anyone do it better? <laughs> Etc. Uh, it's an area where we can share our challenges and share our successes uh, and share just information amongst each other. So keep that in mind uh, as we go through there. Uh, we'll have you guys uh, posting on there. And if you have any questions, you can message it on there, especially if it's a question that you're like, man, I think uh, everyone could benefit from this question. I'm gonna ask this question and then I can answer it through that group form and everyone can kind of have an idea. Of it. Consistency, do your best to eat as much as you can every three hours. So that's that kind of good spread throughout the day. Always try to pair your protein with carbohydrates in every snack that you have or meal. Uh, because it needs those carbohydrates to pull in that protein. From there, uh, plan your meals ahead of time. It is very helpful if you're logging food to do it before you eat. The day before or that night before, instead of me worrying about what I ate previously today, I'm going to go, hey, tomorrow morning I'm having this. Let me just log it right now. Oh, and I'm having that for lunch and my plan for dinner is this. It is a lot easier to stay on track when you have this thing that says, this is what you're eating. <laughs> And then eventually you can be like, well, I could go to Subway, but uh, I already put it in there. It's a lot easier. Just keeps you a little bit more focused. And especially if you hate logging food, one of the hardest things is backtrack. Oh, I ate all these things. Now I have to go in here. That's when I usually see these weird dips. Did you really only eat 300 calories yesterday? <laughs> no, nah, I just didn't log. Okay, cool. Um, from there, set, uh, I, some people set timers so they can remember, hey, I need that snack right here. I tend to say, do that if you're missing them consistently and it's causing you to binge later. Um, not a morning person, try a smoothie. That's one of the meal options. There's also recipes for that. It's super simple and you can just throw in some protein with a bunch of vegetables and fruits and then you can pretty much be good and gone and on your way. Um, and then on the road, try to think about what things you can bring with you to be prepared. Uh, gas stations have terrible food. Like, uh, it's very hard to find, except for like what, a banana? Or maybe uh, turkey, yeah, there might be some like, yeah, random meats or yogurts, there you go. Like you can always make it work, but I can tell you right now, when you're walking to that yogurt thing, you're also gonna pass 16 things, the fry food and a bunch of donuts, and it becomes really hard to resist when you're super hungry and at a gas station. Uh, if that's the case, but do your best carry foods with you that you know you can have and snacks on the road when you're traveling as you go through here This is just kind of a sample of what a timing would look like for some athletes breakfast seven to nine depending on what you do uh, If you're going to the gym first thing Then you might want to have just a very small snack of some carbohydrates and a little bit of protein before you go to the gym Nothing big that you could uh, uh, Leave at the gym. You know what I mean? Not crucial no. Uh, some people will just go in with just coffee or not or nothing at all. They'll go in a fasted state. We'll be fine. The biggest thing is that it, after that gym that you do have your breakfast or you do have at least some type of snack to get some food in there because your body's just, let's give me some. I'm, I just fought. Let's do this. 
Uh, snack time. Snacks are usually about 150 to 200 calories, depending on the person. Uh, and you do your best to split them between your macros evenly. Uh, and then, as I said, if you're not a snack person, you can incorporate those snacks into your meals. And by that, I mean just like your meal can be a little bit bigger to incorporate that food that would have been in the snack side. Or maybe you have your actual snack and you just eat it with your meal. That's okay. Totally understand that. Um, lunch, midday-ish side, you'll have another snack in before. Same idea as before with, uh, with uh, your breakdown and, and when you're eating it. The one thing I tend to say is that if you're not a snack person but you're overly hungry at dinner and you find yourself eating or binge eating on those sides, make sure that you start to incorporate that snack as best as you can. That to me is one of the more important snacks that happen throughout the day. Um, and then dinner side. Uh, if you are one of those people that does find yourself eating after dinner, continually for some reason, set timing. Hey, at eight o'clock, I don't eat anymore. That's because I found that I can't control myself. At eight o'clock, it's just seltzer water and happy. So, uh, so keep that in mind if that's the case, but if you do find yourself binging at dinners a lot of times, it's probably because you're being a little too strict in what you're eating in the mid or the, the early parts of the day. I made it through the day and look at, look at me, I only had 600 calories and it was well split between things. And now, instead of having that extra seven, 800 calories you have for dinner, you have 1,000, you have 1,500, and you overeat beyond what you probably would have eaten for dinner had you had a little bit bigger breakfast for lunch. Um, hydration, as I said, try to do your best to drink plenty of water as you go through the day. About 80 ounces will be about perfect. It's needed for pretty much every single thing that you do. If you want to feel better, drink a little bit more water. As I said, about 80 ounces, 12 ounces at every meal and snack would put you already at 60 ounces. That just leaves you a couple extra glasses. I wake up in the morning and have one glass of water just because I'm getting off of the night and I'd like to have some water and I'd like to get moving. So, um, and then I'll have my coffee. So. With that, um, juices are packed with so, uh, sugars. Do be careful about some of those aspects as you drink. Uh, choose them wisely. I tend to say if you don't like the taste of water, throw in some mint, maybe throw in some kind of like basil side or some just cucumber and uh, lemon or lime to give you just some flavor as you go through this. Um, you can also add some, like some people have packets that work really well for it. Alcohol, uh, because it is always one of those things that I get asked tons of questions before. Be mindful before making your drinks. Mixed drinks are some of the worst things that you can have. It's like, can I have two candy bars with my uh, drink? Perfect, and let me just drink seven of those. So like, as you go through there, be careful of mixed drinks because how much sugar you can have added in with those ones. Um, I will say this, the closer you stick to meal plans and the more that you try to avoid alcohols, the better success people do tend to have. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't have success with alcohol, okay? Just be careful of it. I mean, a single beer is somewhere around 300 calories, and it's mostly all carbohydrates and sugars. So keep that in mind. It's like, one beer, oh shit. Well, maybe I'll just have a little bit of whiskey with something, or I'll do my mix with soda and lime, etc. Uh, and I always tend to say, like, do your best to have water while you're drinking if you are having alcohol with your thing. Uh, Drink water between beverages or after beverages. I know it can be a little hard, but it will help you. Um, from there, eating around your workout. So as I said, proteins and carbs are the best things to have when you're doing that. Uh, somewhere in the, the range of 15 to 20 to 25 grams of protein with 15 to 20 to 25 grams of carbohydrates, a little bit more depending on how hard you are working. So keeping that in mind, your exercise levels will depend on that. Uh, protein sources, the thing that people use most of all is just protein shakes, and that's because of ease of digestion and ease of use. How easy is it to have a powder in a cup and shake it and drink it? You can have chicken and rice, that would work perfectly. Did you prepare chicken and rice, and did you bring it to the gym, and do you want to eat it cold, can you heat it up? <laughs> Boom, shake, done. Simple as that and it tastes like chocolate milk. <laughs> so keep that in mind, it's easier for those things. If you're looking for something to add those carbohydrates, a lot of the proteins that we tend to sell here don't have some carbohydrates in them. It's pretty much a straight protein, uh, but many of them do supply that with a little bit of extra carbohydrates. One thing you can add, applesauce, or you can throw in with co uh, coconut water. Works as a really, really good hydration source. So you can do and add those carbohydrates. Um, coffee, uh, what I tend to say is there's nothing real wrong with coffee. Just be careful about the quantities that you drink. Uh, I have had people come in and talk nutrition with me that say they had 12 cups of coffee in a day. 
to which I was like, how are you still fucking alive? Uh, and it turns out he smoked also like two packs a day. Uh, nicotine helped break down caffeine. So it was a good balance for them. They were able to sleep. So uh, I was like, Phew. I was like, you don't need me to tell you, you need to quit, like, all of that shit, but, uh, uh, you should. So, keep that in mind, coffee, totally fine, do be careful of the additives that you add to it, try to avoid the sugars if you're putting it in your coffee, a little bit of cream isn't gonna kill anyone, but if you can choose, like, almond, uh, almond milks, those are really good for those sides. Um, mixed coffee drinks is where you're gonna have the bad problem. Tons of 54 grams of sugar for a mocha frappuccino. That's a lot of sugar. It's a candy bar in your drink. So keep that in mind as you go through there. The half-life of coffee is eight to 12 hours. So if you are having coffee afternoon and you're having trouble sleeping, it's probably a little bit of to do with it. And keep this in mind. I know a lot of people who can drink a lot of coffee and then they can sleep just fine. That doesn't mean that their body is not still trying to burn through and work through that as they are sleeping. So while they may not, they may be sleeping, they may not be well rested. So keep that in mind as you go through there. I try to have my one coffee in the morning, unless I'm up at four in the morning to teach in here, then I'm probably having two. Every blue moon I have two. But at <laughs> noon, I stop. I just stop because I know it can mess with me. Unlike Mike, you know, he comes in here, it's 6 p.m. and he's having a cup of coffee. And then he shows up here at five in the morning. He's a freak of nature, don't follow him. <laughs> just know that freak of natures do happen. Um, as I said, almond milk and stuff like that can be helpful if you're trying to avoid some of those half and halves as we go through there. Cats from Z's, that's part of our lifestyle sheet that I uh, handed out to you guys with this. Did I grab one myself? I may not have. Um, if you have it, it has five little options. Thank you. Five little options. Nutrition, exercise, hydration, sleep, and stress relief. Um, each one you can give a 1.2 with a total of five points through the day. There is a front side here and a back side, all the way to 28 for our four weeks. This is a nutrition challenge. A lot of people come here so they can dial in their nutrition. Why? Because they want to become healthier. We want to become healthier, and we focus on other cool things as well. Nutrition is a great aspect, but making sure that we get seven hours minimum of sleep a day or a night would be super awesome as well. Hey, I slept great. Boom. Got one point there. Nutrition, did I stick to my meals? Did I stick within my numbers really well? Boom, I got a one. Things didn't work out too well, zero. Okay, shit happens. Um, did I exercise today? Did I get out and move? Did I walk the dogs? Do I do something that got my heart rate up? Cool, that's a one. That's awesome. Uh, I tend to say it's like exercise is not necessary when you're eating very, very healthy to get a healthier lifestyle, but exercise is like the best friend when you're moving that has a truck. Like it's gonna make things easier. Simple as that. Um, uh, hydration, did I get my 80 ounces of water? Boom, I got my one. Stress relief is the one thing that I tend to like put out there because I'd like people to do things that allow them to breathe and relax for a little bit. Now, personally, I would not say that that should be sitting on the couch watching TV. Uh, stress relief, I watched Game of Thrones. Like, I don't think that's stress relief. So uh, keep that in mind. Like for me, it's stupid and lame, but I, I tie flies, I fish, so I tie flies. It's quite literally uh, arts and crafts for me, so I just create things that I think fish will eat, and I just focus on that. And I find out in an hour, I'm like, I can breathe, and I'm not thinking about things. And then I stop, and then I'm like, oh shit, I got all the things in the world to do. So, uh, take some time, 15 minutes, half an hour, read a book, relax, find ways to do that, you will find benefits from it. Um, uh, Let's talk about uh, my fitness pal. So uh, honestly, the big side of this, if you have an idea of how we're going forward as we go through here, um, you're good to go. You don't have to stick with me, especially if you know how my fitness pal works uh, and some of the, the tricks with HSN. So you guys are good with me. Just keep in mind on Monday, we are the official start, but that doesn't mean you can't start now. Um, also, uh, as I said, the challenges for this week is meal plan. So uh, do a meal prep for something, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Post it to the group page as well as say hi in the group page. Uh, as I said, I will send a direct message to everyone. It'll be kind of blank, but reply to that to let me know so I can put in everyone's numbers. Perfect. So if you've never used MyFitnessPal or Log Food, let's talk a little bit about logging food. Today. Today. Yeah, basically if you reply to that message, 
I will put them in that day. I may put them in as a general side, but then if you tell me, oh yeah, Kate, I've been uh, running seven miles a day, five, seven days a week, then I'm gonna be like, oh, that shit needs to change. So just keep that in mind. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Have a good one now. Perfect. You guys can bring it in a little bit closer as we talk about my fitness bound. Yeah, we're going, brother. Yeah, is there none up front? Um, I didn't check, but I just didn't want to go behind the counter. Yeah, oh no, go behind the counter. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. So, my fitness pal, a couple things that can be very beneficial for logging through. Uh, if you have measuring cups and if you have a uh, scale. So those are the two things that will help you the most as we go forward through this. Um, I would recommend get those initially. Eventually over time you'll be able to like see what th certain amounts are. And you won't need them as much. But that being said, I tend to say is like if you do take two, three weeks off of measuring food, it's always nice to every once in a while re-measure because sometimes our eyes get a little bit bigger than what our original thought of what six ounces or et cetera are. Um, now, if you have MyFitnessPal downloaded onto your phone, a couple things that you can look through as we go through. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the video there and we can talk MyFitnessPal later. Uh,